Hello friends, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to try an author, Talia Hibbert. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. So I'm kind of a dumb, a dummy, a big dummy. I realized I forgot to update completely while reading Damaged Goods. I just kind of read it and didn't realize that I was almost done with it because it's such a short book. <laughs> to be fair, I was also in a really bad reading slump and I read the first chapter of Damaged Goods and then I watched all three seasons of Avatar Last Airbender. Then I read another chapter and watched all five seasons of she and the Princess Power. Then I watched the first season of The Dragon Prince and read the rest of the book. So I was definitely like, I was just not feeling reading, but like once you like get into the meat of the book, I had a good time. Now I should probably explain what this book is about. And it is about a woman who is pregnant, who is in the middle of divorcing her abusive husband. And she goes to this old beach house that her and her family had to stay at because she felt safe there when she was younger. And she meets her old best friend slash like first time she did it with someone. Um, and it's just like really domestic and cute and a quick little novella, so <laughs> that's all. Yeah, it was really cute. The birthing scene was a bit more graphic than I've read in a romance novel, so there's that. I know that's like a trigger for a lot of people, so be warned. They, uh, they definitely talk about it a bit, but yeah, it was good. I gave it four stars. It was very cute and now I'm going to have my breakfast. Yeah, this is my breakfast. And watch more of The Dragon Prince and we'll see how much I read today. <laughs> so I have this pause so I can talk about this real quick. But I saw some people wanted like more people to incorporate the other hobbies that they do in their, their channels, their booktube channels. <laughs> I don't know why I can't speak right now. Yeah, I'm slowly making- I'm trying to make this like a- like a cushion, like a pillow, like it's- it's pretty thick, like it doesn't look thick, but if you feel it, it's pretty sturdy, and I'm just gonna keep adding layers to it until I run out of yarn. But yeah, this is what I'm doing, and I got this as a birthday present, because my birthday was just two days ago, so yeah, that's my kitty over there. Hello, so it's been a while. My ebook says I am 37% into Get a Life Chloe Brown. I should have updated it before because there's just like a lot of little sayings that Chloe says that I really enjoy. Like it's just funny. Yeah, so if you don't know what Get a Life Chloe Brown is about, it's about a girl who writes a get a life list hence the title. She writes us a list to do stuff because of her illnesses. She hasn't done like basic things kind of that like everybody goes through and she is slowly checking things off the list. Like the first thing is move out of the house, her family's house that she grew up in. And then the next stuff is like go to a bar or go camping, ride a motorbike. Like, it's just like basic-ish things. And I left off on this part where Chloe we just got off this motorcycle on this guy named Red. He is a superintendent at the apartment that she lives at. And he has a motorcycle, obviously. And it's just really cute. Their relationship is interesting because he thinks she's like a stuck up, spoiled rich girl. And she's just kind of like, yeah, so what's your point? <laughs> He's like nice to everyone else except for her because she's rich and like, I don't know. But I am definitely enjoying what's happening. Just for some reason, I haven't been like generally enjoying romance lately, which feels awful to me because for so long I've loved romance and it's just like the more and more time goes on the less I want to read it and so that's like definitely getting to me like I can see how wonderful 
this book in the story is but I'm just like having a hard time picking it up and like getting into it especially because Chloe and I share like so many like bodily things <laughs> That's not, um just like I mean she has chronic illness and I have chronic illness and like I know exactly what she's going through but because like this is like a romance book I don't want to read it for some reason I just want to read like anything in all fantasy but I've wanted to read this book for so long since it came out I've wanted to read this book and like the second book is now out like <laughs> I just need to, I just need to do it but yeah I think my problem is there's just like no magic like I just want magic and the next book I picked to like try Talia Hibbert is a paranormal romance and I'm really excited about that and I'm hoping I'm going to enjoy that more because just the thought of like no magic is getting to me and also I've been in like the worst reading slump I've ever been in in my entire life. The whole month of June the only thing I read was a reread and the next book in a series that came out. That's it. Like I usually read so much more than that. Like my average is like I 10 books a month. At least at least read 10 books a month. And like I can barely pick up a page. I can barely pick up a word. I just keep watching anime, which is like fine, you know, anime's fun. But I would love to make a freaking video, you know what I mean? I would love to like just read like there's so many things I want to read there's so many things that have come out that I I was anticipating this year and I just like haven't gotten to it I just don't I haven't read it like I just had that book haul where I got like 20 something books and like I've read maybe two of them <laughs> like what is going on with me I don't understand I also uh for my birthday I went to this thrift shop and because they were having a sale 50 cents for a book didn't matter what type of book didn't matter if it was a mass market paperback or a gigantic hardback like everything was 50 cents and i was like oh my god like i'm so going i'm so excited and i got like seven books did i have i touched any of them no sure haven't but yeah, i'm gonna force myself to read which isn't like probably the best thing to do but luckily Talia Hibbert is like very funny and like it's just like kind of quick paced so like that's a good thing for my reading slump but I just like the thought of reading is just like awful I don't know what I don't know why so yeah I just wanted to update and um complain about myself because what am I doing I don't know but anyway I'm here with my my lovely babies hi huh, puppies they're both so so out of it so chloe was just describing to red what it was like when she was trying to find out what was wrong with her body and how she lost all of her friends and she lost her fiance and it definitely reminded me what it was like to go through doctors thinking that you're lying it's a very personal reading this book talia hibbert i saw her tweet some she like responded to someone's tweet saying like why did you make this book and she's like i made it because there's so many people that don't believe us and like i'm gonna go and i'm gonna like calm down a little bit <laughs> so i love to make homemade milkshakes and if you haven't had a peanut butter milkshake i highly recommend okay it's amazing like it's one of the best things ever please try it okay thank you goodbye So I just got done with Get A Life Chloe Brown. I gave it five stars. I definitely enjoyed it. But sadly, I think my reading tastes are changing because I started skipping the smut scenes and like, I've just been doing that lately. Like every time I read romance or there's like smut in a book, like a fantasy book or something, I'll just skip it and like, I would always get so like excited I was like ooh steamy 
And like, as more and more time goes on, I just don't want to read that stuff. Like, I don't know who I am. <laughs> I don't know. I definitely enjoyed their story and their journey. I just, uh, I just don't think I like romance anymore. <laughs> I'm like tearing up <laughs> because of that. Going to read, what's it called? Mating the Huntress. You can see Goodreads on my iPad right there. I don't see if I'm going to be more into this one because there's going to be like a magical, fantastical element to it. I just don't know what my reading tastes are anymore. Like I have no idea. Like I just feel like everything that I used to enjoy, I no longer enjoy. And the things that I used to hate, I love now. Like I don't know what's happened to me, but it really sucks. <laughs> Ricky? Ricky? Can I be in the Yeah, what? Yep. Oh, there you go. Yep. Mm-hmm. You just want me to keep petting you. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. That's really nice. Oh, you can see where you clawed me. Yeah, right on my thumb. You can see it. Pretty kitty. Oh, oh! Now we're gonna bite it. Now we're gonna bite the hand. I can never tell if you want my hand or not. You you bite it and then you claw it and then you lick it. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, I'm gonna take my hand back now. So I just finished chapter one in Mating the Huntress and. I just love paranormal romance so much. Like even this, we got the prologue in chapter one. I'm like already, I'm so for it. <laughs> if you don't know what it's about, it's about a werewolf and a huntress, a woman who is trained to kill werewolves. And, but she's actually not allowed to actually kill werewolves because when she was born, an oracle came to her parents and said, the first werewolf she kills will rip out her heart. So her family makes her just work at their family-owned coffee shop. And I'm already for this. She's like planning to kill him. She's like, I already know your name, your address, and your birthday when he asked her out on a date. And she's like, yeah, that's, that's watch horror movies. And she's like, I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> and he's like, I'm already so in love with her. She's my soulmate. We're gonna be together forever. And he's like, he thinks they're on, they're gonna have this fun horror movie date. And she's like planning to murder him. <laughs> So the characters at their little horror movie date right now and the girl is literally trying to kill him. Like literally a dagger is in his chest and he's sitting here. This man is really sitting here impressed, like congratulating her, saying that she's cute, like totally for her murderous intent. He's just like, she's so hot. Like <laughs> she's so into She's literally on top of him, like trying to murder him. He's just he's like, damn, that's a wife right there. So this lighting is really weird and I literally just updated, but like she keeps pulling weapons out and he's like, yes, baby, like so hot. Keep trying to hurt me. Keep burning me with silver. I love it. Like <laughs> he's so impressed, like he's so impressed. He's like, wow, her fighting stance, top notch. Like, she really knows what she's doing. <laughs> like, I can't get over this. I have to read this. We're in his perspective right now. He's like, Christ, she wasn't shy at all, was she? The hesitation, the demure smiles, the lowered lashes, it was all a trap. She wasn't sweet or gentle. She was a bloodthirsty fucking murderer. His heart sang. This man. Honestly, this would be me. This would be me. I'd be this man. I would just like, she, this beautiful woman was trying to kill me. I'd be like, well, well, it is what it is. Lighting change. <laughs> so I filmed this entire ending clip, but the air conditioner was blazing in the background. Like you could not hear me and the lighting was still very dark and I thought 
I'll just redo it because that makes the most logical sense. So here we are. I have finished Mating the Huntress and five out of five stars. It was absolutely beautiful if I'm being honest. I love that book so much. I it was probably already gonna be in like my top 20 books of 2020 or something like I kid you not I loved it so much. <laughs> We find out right at the end that Chastity, the main female character, has 14 siblings. I was also talking about that I hope Talia Hibbert turns Mating Huntress into a series because of course, you know, the main character has 15 or 14 siblings and it would just be very interesting. And like, honestly, my only complaint is that I wish the book was longer. Goodreads says it's 168 pages. I read it on ebook, so you know, you can't like rely on that page count to know what the actual book's page count is. But yeah, I just wanted to be longer. I wanted to see Luke meet her family. That would have been a fun time, like a whole family of hunters, just like accepting him into the fold. But yeah, I had a wonderful time. I just like. I don't know what my deal is, but anything set in our world that has absolutely no magic or sci-fi elements, I have such a weird problem with. Like, reading Get a Life Chloe Brown, like, meant so much to me because the character went through very similar struggles as myself, and, like, that means a lot. But just the fact that she, like, couldn't shoot fire from her hands, like, bothered me. <laughs> and that's not the book's fault, it's just my fault. Like I said, I give it five stars. I wouldn't give a book five stars if I didn't enjoy it, you know? But yeah, that was my time with Talia Hibbert. I I loved it so much. Like, it was so fun. I highly recommend Mating the Huntress if you're into some paranormal werewolf shifter romance. Luke is a king. I don't know how many times we're going to do Chef's Kiss while talking about this book, but I just, I'm gonna do it over and over again. Like, over and over and over again, because I loved it so much. But yeah, that's it. I don't have much else to say. Go read Mating the Huntress, if you're interested, and get a life Chloe Brown. If Talia Hibbert ever comes out with another paranormal romance, I will j be jumping on that immediately. Know that. That's a, a straight up fact. And oh yes, thank you, thank you for the kisses. I had a great time overall, even though I complained a lot. I'm sorry about that. I'm a complainer. It's just who I am. But yeah, so we're gonna go and we're gonna sleep because we sleep when we're not in front of the camera. Bye.